Today's In Focus comes from just outside the small village of Hochdorf in Germany. Around 500 BC, the Laten and Hallstatt cultures of Europe were thriving. Their immense material wealth came not least from their location on the main transit and trade rivers of Europe, and at this time there was a blossoming of so-called Celtic artwork and gold smithery. This gold came chiefly from the control of the trade of high-quality goods such as Roman wine to lands further north in Europe. By controlling this trade network, they became immensely wealthy. However, this lucrative trade monopoly simply could not last, and the might of the Roman Empire would eventually come to engulf much of their former territories. In 1977, amateur archaeologist René Liebfried was investigating the lands around the small village of Hochdorf. One day, she noticed the remains of a low-lying man-made mound to the east of the village. She notified the authorities, and despite heavy ploughing, soon a stone circle was identified. Professional archaeologist Jörg Beel became extremely interested in the site, and in 1978 began excavations. He soon located a wooden chamber within the mound. Over the next couple of seasons, the team carefully excavated and surveyed the site. It became clear that this had been the burial of a very important individual. Buried in a mound and surrounded by a stone circle, unfortunately the wooden chamber within had collapsed soon after construction, before the body had even finished decomposing. However, through meticulous excavation and careful reconstruction, the team were able to gain a deep understanding of what had once been inside the chamber. This had been the burial of a 40-year-old chieftain or prince, laid out on a fine bronze couch and surrounded by his worldly goods. The eastern half of the 11-metre square chamber was dominated by a four-wheeled wooden vehicle. Elaborately decorated in ironwork and bronze plaques, its function in life is unclear, but it probably served as the hearse for the burial. A total of nine beautiful bowls had been placed upon the hearse after the body was removed, and nine drinking horns had been hung on the wall around the chamber. Nine guests was thought to be the ideal for a symposium or a Greek drinking party, and the presence of an elaborately crafted bronze cauldron from Greece or southern Italy indicates that this man, possibly, had a Greek-style party planned for the afterlife. And this man could clearly afford an elaborate party. After all, he had been laid out on a great bronze, three-metre-long couch, finely crafted and patterned. The couch was supported by eight bronze female figurines, mounted upon intricately made wheels, and the whole piece of furniture was decorated with punch-dot images of warriors and dancers. As you would expect, the man upon the couch was elaborately adorned. He had stood around six foot two and had been buried with a gold-plated dagger at his waist. The craftsmanship of this object was truly incredible and remains impressive to this day. Gold and bronze brooches had been laid upon his chest in life to hold cloaks in place. And mourners had placed a large gold bracelet on his right arm and a large gold torque around his neck. Gold plates, an iron razor, amber beads a wooden comb, and a conical wooden hat were just some of the other items placed with the body. The gold work where his footwear had been spoke of slightly pointed leather shoes as seen on Etruscan murals. In short, this man was quite literally decked out in gold from head to toe. The gold and finery within the tomb has led some to call the Hochdorf chieftain the Tutankhamun of Europe. This comparison is justified, and just as with Tutankhamun, people flock to see his treasures. Indeed, the burial mound at Hochdorf has been reconstructed in all its glory, with an obelisk of sorts atop. Tourists can gather round to see where the prince was buried. However, the finery within gains a new resonance today with the monetary crisis in Europe. There is talk of the rising Chinese economy bailing out the Eurozone, offering a lifeline to this economically ailing part of the world. Why? Because as with any growing enterprise, the things you need most are customers who have money to buy your products. And for a time, before the great heights of the Roman Empire in the 3rd century, and before Augustus came to a city of clay and left it a city of marble, Rome needed customers. For a time, life was good. Hallstatt and the Ten Chieftains thrived as the economic middlemen of Europe. But this status was not sustainable. 
and ultimately the fragility of power based upon trade networks may yet prove a poignant lesson for the people of Europe.